footage of an F-35 fighter crash, the Americans who play for Team China, and China becomes an epic nuclear threat. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. You should be using a VPN like Surfshark to protect yourself whenever you go online. New footage has emerged of the U.S. F-35 fighter jet that crashed in the South China Sea. The Pentagon is confirming the authenticity of a new leaked video showing footage of last month's U.S. fighter jet crash in the South China Sea. In January, a freedom of navigation operation in the South China Sea ended with disaster when an F-35 fighter jet crashed during routine flight operations. No one was killed, but it did create a major problem. Tonight, one of the most sophisticated pieces of military technology on the planet, now at the bottom of the South China Sea and up for grabs. And a race was on between the U.S. and China to see who could recover it first. This is an unconfirmed photo of the F-35 sinking in the South China Sea. But this video, confirmed by the Pentagon, shows the actual crash. Frankly, it's a miracle no one was killed. But the race still continues for the wreckage. Speaking of wreckage, the U.S.-China trade deal. President Trump signed the deal back in January 2020, right around the time news reports started paying more attention to a certain virus outbreak in Wuhan. But two years later, it turns out that the Chinese Communist Party did not buy what they said they were going to under the trade deal. In the end, China bought only 57% of the U.S. exports it had committed to purchase under the agreement, not even enough to reach its import levels from before the trade war. The Biden administration is now saying they're going to hold China to account for missing those targets. How they're going to do that is not clear. But according to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the Biden administration is looking at more tariffs as one option. Another option is working with U.S. allies to demand China provide a level playing field for international companies. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Meanwhile, Chinese officials say the shortfall is not their fault, it's the pandemic's fault, and that the U.S. should cancel all their China tariffs. Yeah, that's not going to happen either. Sounds like U.S.-China trade negotiations are going really well. And coming up after the break, what happened to the Americans who competed in the Olympics for China? Welcome back. What can one say about the Beijing Winter Olympics? I think it's best summed up by this video. This year's Olympics is remarkable for many reasons. One is this fantastic t-shirt we're selling. Beijing 2022, fake snow, real genocide. Time is running out to celebrate the Olympics with our exclusive Not Made in China t-shirt. Another reason the Beijing Olympics are remarkable is that China has relied on foreign-born athletes to compete for Team China. More than ever before, China has relied on athletes granted citizenship for events where it previously struggled to win medals, including figure skating, ice hockey, and skiing. Just to be clear, China isn't the only country to do this. but. China also does not recognize dual citizenship, so it's a little unclear what the status is over American-born athletes who competed for China. Did they give up their U.S. citizenship to compete for China? These athletes tend to avoid that question. Case in point, Eileen Gu. She's a darling on Chinese social media for winning gold. In fact, she was interviewed by the Chinese Communist Party's Central Commission for Discipline Inspection. Yeah, the organization Xi Jinping has used to go after his political enemies for corruption. They're interviewing athletes now, apparently. In the interview, Gu called China her homeland, despite getting all the training she used to earn her gold in America. Now, Gu lives a very privileged life in both China and America. Her mom is the daughter of a Chinese government official. She's also a venture capitalist that aimed to connect the U.S. and China. 
back in 2019, right before she decided to switch to competing for China. Eileen Gu appeared at an event standing next to Chinese leader Xi Jinping. Gu has also gotten a lot of modeling and sponsorship opportunities in China. So it's not a big surprise that Gu has been avoiding all questions from foreign media about her citizenship status. If she admits to giving up her U.S. citizenship, that creates a backlash in America. But if the Chinese regime made a special exemption for her, well, that creates a backlash in China. Now, I actually feel bad for her. She will go down in history for turning her back on the United States and winning a gold for a brutal communist regime guilty of genocide. Lots of genocide. She's only 18 years old, and it seems like a lot of this was due to the influence of her tiger mom. Gu might look at this differently in a few years. I also feel bad for another U.S.-born athlete who competed for China, skater Zhu Yi. She did not have as much success during the games, falling twice. She was obviously distraught. But it only gets worse. While Eileen Gu is the darling of Chinese social media, Zhu Yi is a pariah. Nationalists insulted her lack of fluency in Mandarin and questioned her suitability for Olympic competition, to the point that China's internet censors stepped in. The fact Chinese censors stepped in show how much of a problem this is for the Chinese Communist Party. On the one hand, they don't have enough gold medal winning athletes, so they have to go abroad to find them. Like I said, this is actually something almost every country does to an extent. But it's relatively new for China because, well, Chinese people have been trained by the Chinese Communist Party to be extremely nationalistic and negative towards outsiders. According to Susan Brownell, an anthropologist and expert on Chinese sports, the reason it hadn't happened before was, quite frankly, xenophobia. And there's a reason why the Chinese Communist Party is reaching out to ethnically Chinese people abroad. For the average Chinese, it might be too much to swallow if we had a national team entirely of non-Chinese looking faces, especially during winter games on home soil. So if they do well, like Eileen Gu, they'll be happy. If they do poorly, like Zhu Yi, they'll be hell to pay. The Chinese Communist Party also uses this as a way to increase its soft power. When Eileen Gu calls China her homeland, it makes China look great, better than America, and it also justifies the party's possessive treatment of Chinese people around the world. Like I've said before, the Chinese regime treats all ethnically Chinese people like they treat giant pandas. No matter where they're born, they belong to China, and they eventually must return to the homeland. Speaking of pandas, they are terrible. And why does anyone even like them? Including Bing Dun Dun. That's the Beijing Winter Olympics mascot Panda. He's supposed to look like he's encased in ice, but it actually looks kind of like he's wearing COVID PPE. Anyway, when he debuted a few years ago, people didn't really like him. But now, he's so popular that Beijing police are punishing people for reselling Bing Dun Dun merch. Apparently, people have been buying up merch to resell at higher prices, which is not okay according to Chinese officials. Here's one Chinese netizen describing how they feel about Bing Dunduan. In 2019, when Bing Dunduan stood out from thousands of design schemes, I had no feelings for it. Like many netizens, I thought it looked ugly and simple-minded. But now I think it's so cute. There's only one explanation for this. Brainwashing. And coming up after the break, China is becoming a, quote, epic nuclear threat. Welcome back. Yet another Chinese city has been put under lockdown as the Omicron variant surges across China. Baise is a city of about 1.4 million people, with another 3 million in surrounding rural areas. Of course, it's not that the Omicron variant is more deadly. The Chinese Communist Party is just doubling down on its zero COVID policy, despite, you know, it being next to impossible to stop Omicron. But the CCP does love locking people away, so it's still a win. Speaking of locking people up, Hong Kong. Hong Kong is going through an Omicron outbreak with over a thousand cases. That's not a lot for many parts of the world, but that's unacceptable for the Chinese regime. And now the state-run People's Daily is writing articles about how China's dynamic zero-COVID policy is the scientific choice for Hong Kong. 
I just did an episode earlier this week about what China's dynamic zero COVID policy means. Like a health code that controls your movements and how it's been used to repress Chinese activists. I could definitely see the Chinese Communist Party rolling that out in Hong Kong in the name of preventing COVID infections. The Chinese regime has put out a new documentary about how successfully Xi Jinping's anti-corruption drive has been. It's called Zero Tolerance, and 4.4 million people have been investigated. But the documentary might have an unintended consequence. Part of it shows Chinese officials confessing to their crimes. The problem is, the show's producers, the state broadcaster, and the party's anti-graft enforcer seemed unaware or unconcerned that they were airing the dirtiest laundry of the Communist Party, which, as the ruling party of a one-party state, has no one to blame for the rampant corruption but itself. Like, the level of corruption is insane. It almost sounds like make-believe. For example, getting seafood boxes stuffed with $300,000, owning a fancy house for nearly every season, running red lights without getting tickets. Chinese netizens responded by saying the documentary was like a how-to guide for bribery, until Chinese censors quickly began deleting critical comments. China is building its first tire factory in Europe. And guess what? It's using Vietnamese slave labor. If you aren't surprised, you're smarter than the Serbian government, which denies all the claims, possibly because China has invested $900 million into this one project alone. But there's more. Chinese companies now run a large steel mill and a copper mine in Serbia. They're building rail networks and highways. What I wonder about all these people willing to work with the Chinese Communist Party is, if the party is willing to use slave labor, how are they going to treat you in the end? Well, here's a hint. A U.S. general is warning the U.S. is facing an epic nuclear threat from China and Russia. He said this is the first time ever that we have a three-party nuclear peer dynamic. And we have no history of this. This is epic. China is ramping up its nuclear capabilities, while Russia is threatening to deploy nuclear missiles in Europe. So overall, things are going well in the world. But while China is becoming an even greater nuclear threat, Hunter Biden, son of President Joe Biden, sought a forever deal with a military-tied Chinese company. We know this from emails recovered from his laptop. This falls close on the heels of a leaked subpoena of Hunter Biden's China bank records. Do you get the sense there's more to this story? Me too. And after the entire world, including me, mocked the Chinese ending to Fight Club, they restored the original ending. The Chinese version remade the ending to have a pro-government message. That's right, a pro-government message in Fight Club. That'd be like making Dune into an anti-drug movie. The spice must be regulated by state-run industry. And this episode is sponsored by Surfshark. Because if you want to access the internet without being constantly monitored by the authorities or by hackers, you should hide your internet activity with a VPN like Surfshark. Surfshark has uncrackable encryption and the most secure VPN protocols. With IP and DNS leak protection, the government can't tell where you're really connecting from and neither can your internet service provider. And Surfshark also protects you by not keeping logs of what you do online. That's why you should use a VPN like Surfshark. It helps protect you whenever you go on the internet. So use Surfshark. And with just one Surfshark account, you can connect as many devices as you want. So try it out. Surfshark has a special deal going on right now that includes 83% off a two-year plan, plus three extra months for free. Go to surfshark.com slash uncensored and use the code uncensored to get their deal that includes three extra months for free. Use the link in the description below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.